So what is uh, OData? Well, OData, and for people that are using Excel a lot, let me open up Excel here, you'll actually see that uh, it's, it is basically, uh, it's basically ODBC for the web, just to put it in terms. So and you actually can find it if you go into um, data and you can get data from here and you go to like, uh, other sources you have here, it's a o data feed. So you see ODBC, OLE. It's really an O data feed. It's just using a web a web call and a web service to pull data into Excel. Now you do have the plugin for by design, which is very useful. But what if you just wanted a very quick and easy way to just pull in some data, um, maybe massive amounts of data? And I'm going to show you how you can do that. So, and I can do that. And we're going to just jump in. So an application unit, application and unit user management, we have called O Data Services. And we're not going to play with this right really to get it going, but you can actually, it's something you can actually create. Um, so you can actually create a web service, just a personalized web service that feeds data. Um, but you don't even have to do that because actually all the data by design is available to be consumed via web service. So all the reports, if you will. And let me show you this example. Is if you go up here, and we're just going to go paste this in, and we're going to go. Oops. Oh, data. So, what's this? Well, if you read through it, and it takes a little bit of reading is you'll see like business partner analytics data services and you see corporate performance analytics service these are all services that are in it by design uh, that let you uh, uh, run results so and actually all the reports that you have in by design are available this way so actually i'm going to go down here and i'm going to go grab a, a very basic thing here it goes using one of these web services so um, so we'll talk about analytics. So what I'm doing is here as I'm going to CRM customer invoicing, that's a work center, customer invoicing analytics. This is a report name and we're going to go in this report. So let's go in here and let's hit this. So let's go real quick. So I'll go to customer invoicing. I'll show you what I'm running. Customer invoicing reports, AKA analytics. And if I go to all reports, and I think this is actually the invoice volume report. You just hit start and you go over here and you have CRM. That's this number here. That report ID is the report ID I'm calling here. And this is actually that report pulled into XML format. So what could you do with this? And I'm just going to high level. I can hit control C. Let's just go down and grab that Excel workbook I had open. And oops, go to home, oops, data, get data. Go data feed. Just paste that URL in here. And this might take a while. So Everybody who attends today, of course, gets my complimentary cheat sheet because I don't expect anyone to remember any of this. <laughs> First off, there's some great blogs that SAP has provided on the topics. Uh, we can give you a link on this and actually I can send this to you right now in the chat. I can send this to everybody. It's a great blog, follow. Um, and so this is, uh, this is uh, how to read this. So if you read this as you use it, so this is all the old data. So you're coming to the old data, and then this is gonna be the work center. Then this is gonna be the report name, and query results is just telling it to give me some results. It defaults to 50 results. If you want more than 50 lines in your row, and this is the number one thing that messes people up with OData is that they do this stuff and it defaults to 50. So if you want, if you're ever gonna have more than 50 rows in your report, you kind of wanna have <laughs> to add this, add this thing top However, number it could be a billion. Don't use a billion. Use a hundred million or something like that. Um, and then RP. So RP just means report. So we're looking at this, and then that's the report ID. So if you're reading it, you're just reading. I want from this by design system the O data. 
from customer invoicing analytics, report number, CRM, IV, whatever, and then query results. Give me some numbers. Um, if you want to have like, if you want to see the reports that can be returned, we'll hit this one here next. Let's go to my Excel here real quick. There we go. You hit this and I just pulled 50, right? So let's just load the data. And so now I've just had created a web service that will load the data right into my Excel workbook. And what's the advantage of this is so it's just raw. So if you're using it, if you're trying to transmit to somebody, um, you might say, well, this is great, but how do I get just a few data columns? And I'll show you that in a second. But this is it can be a slow for a second, but this will load that. Oh, there it goes. There, and I've just loaded all this data. And it's just raw data, right? So it says invoice canceled, created, and uh, just pulled all this detail into my Excel workbook. And the advantage is, is though it's unformatted, but if you're using this to transmit to somebody else and you just want to send a few columns, I'll show you how we can do that next. But so that's, uh, so let's see, well, like, uh, just playing with OData in some of these feeds and just using the metadata. The metadata just tells you, um, just tells it that, hey, give me some data, right? So let's just drop here and you notice I'm just doing another tab. So I'm just gonna look at this customer invoicing analytics, hit metadata. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna tell me everything there is, it's gonna show me everything there is to see here, right? And it's gonna show me all the fields. These are all the fields that are in that data source or in the data sources, all right? This is that report and these are all the fields in the that report, right? Quantity, invoice quantity, all the, the maximum length. So it tells you everything about the fields. If you want to find just really quickly a list of the reports, here are the entity container. This is where you can find the reports that you can find the real, and they're all human readable ultimately. So if you go down here, it's uh, aggregate open cust documents, customer invoicing, uh, transaction volume report, ordered confirmed invoices, right? Earned profit overview for dashboard. So all your reports are available. And, uh, and you see it's available quickly when I'm logged in. But what if I just wanna pull in one or two fields, right? I don't wanna pull in everything. And this is where uh, OData can be handy if you're just looking for some easy data. So let's go back into the invoice volume report. And let's go to business analytics. And business analytics and design reports. Uh, see, invoice volume report. Here we go. There we go. So you probably have seen this here, this button. What's, what's this guy do? Well, what this does is lets you write because SAP realizes that it's really only geeks like me that really want to sit and figure out how to parse one of these strings. So, so, so they've actually made it human e easy for a normal non-technical user to grab some data. So I can, so this is all the columns that are available. So I want maybe the, the product and maybe the project, actually product text and let's get uh, sales order ID and uh, Maybe just doing it for tax. I'm just pulling this data. I'm only pulling these fees, so I'm just pulling these data. You can actually apply filters. So if you want to filter the data, you can apply your filters here, right? And you can say, I want to have the top. I want the top. Well, just 1,000 items. Remember that top thing. If you need to skip the two, I could do that. I don't know why people do that, but you have the ability to skip like the first five items. If, uh, I'm going to pull actually in this case. I'll pull top 50. Right. And then what you do is uh, so metadata query creates a query to pull the metadata. Um, just generate here. It creates the query for you just like that. Like that. They hit copy. And here we go. It looks like this. You can just paste it right in. But now I can just go to my Excel. OK, that looks. Oh, that's hard to read. Let me go to Excel. Let me show, show the impact of that in Excel. So that lets me quickly and easily do a data, get data on other services, OData feed, and paste. 
So and we'll just pull those fields. See, it just pulls that set of data that I, that I asked it for. So simple, easy, um, nothing to really be. I think people get intimidated by it because they think it's it's well, it's it's not really clear. SAP has some nice data documentation. Um, if you go to these uh, this blog, I'm just going to go out here real quick. Uh, there's actually uh, this guy here. Actually, they write it and they make it pretty easy. And I would just say it's you know it's light afternoon reading. But it just kind of talks about the patterns and gives you examples on how to run this. So you can actually kind of go through this on your own system and just plug in your system name and run through these. Nothing's going to hurt your system, but it kind of just walks you through all the parameters and all the variables they can get. But at the end of the day, you don't have to really know any of it anymore because they've created this own data query. Now, where this can come in help helpful is if you have to send data to sort of someone up uh, like a bank or somebody like that, or they need someone to pull the data. What this, uh, you can take this query, right? You could then go over here and go back to uh, application and user management, and you could create a custom data service. Because you saw that I'm pulling the data into Excel. It's just using my login, so it knows it's using my authentic authentication. Um, but you can actually create a custom data service. You could create a new data service, right? It would say uh, customer cafe, right? We'll call that and save and open. Oops, there we go. Save and open, no spaces. Okay, work center view, All right? So this is, you're gonna run this off the work center. So this is, goes back to, uh, Customer invoicing. It doesn't hurt to spell things correctly. Wow, that's impressive. Um, actually, let's see, invoice. Just uh, we'll say yeah, we'll say work center view. We'll just uh, drive a customer view, I guess. Our customer accounts receivables, right? And you can select a business object. And the node name, right? and you're actually just building up your web service, then what you do is you pick which of these items here you want to have exposed to your web service, right? And you can blow these up if you need to, right? And uh, you create entities, it's just create entities, is actually move that over. So you have adding this over here, it starts adding this data. You just check what you want to add into your web service. We can say I want to add that. Yes, okay. We'll put that under it and we're just all of this underneath here. And uh, you can go under function imports, but we're not doing any imports. And you hit activate. Basically, that creates a custom web service here just for these data elements I just put in there. So if you want to just feed one or two data pieces to somebody else, or maybe a lot of data pieces, it creates it. And it actually just pulls all this data. And what it does is it creates a URL. So now you actually will have a custom. So if I hit activate, see, that's, that's my customer cafe metadata. So if I click on that, and it pulls my metadata, and I've created a web service that then people can query with Excel. Pretty straightforward. Anyways. Uh, coming back on this, the other thing you might want to do is create a, a, a user, a system user. So if you're doing this, you actually want to create a technical user. 
instead of a regular user because you don't want to share your user ID, but you can create a technical user that basically only has access to that web service. Anyway.